Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. I got pre-critic. I got Dublin stuff. I got your city council report, but also I got Missoula Agent Service on here talking about giving trees. Catherine Hunkerford will talk all about that later in the day, but let's talk a little bit about the weather. It is currently 34 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 38. Your low is going to be 24. You can expect some of that snow happening this week, this weekend as well. We had a little snow the other day. This morning it was pretty wet, um, but you can expect some of those lower high temperatures happening this weekend as well. So you might want to watch the roads a little bit as you go into this weekend, it, or if you're planning to go on any kind of ski trips, this might be the weekend for you. I should probably have a snow report coming up pretty soon. Um, it is Friday the 13th, but uh, this day also marks a big thing that's happening in the city of Missoula, especially at the Southgate Mall, uh, at the Southgate Mall, and that's called Tuba Christmas. So you like tubas? You like little brass? Uh, tonight at 7 p.m., the uh, Southgate Mall will host the 30th annual Tuba Christmas. Um, practice for those interested in playing is at 4 p.m. They usually do this at Sentinel High School, and it's going to be in their new band room. And the new band room is very located next to the Margaret Johnson Theater, uh, near their main entrance, blah, 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 all that stuff. Performance 7 p.m., right next to the clock in the food court at the Southgate Mall. Just go through the main entrance. Um, Fourth Street Homes are a hot topic this week, and I will be discussing uh, this a little bit more in a uh, city council report. Fourth Street, just giving you a little bit of background, is that uh, there's a rezoning in a property that's being sold off of Fourth Street. It's next to uh, the Missoulian, right behind uh, Bridge Pizza. And what they're going to try to do is going to do a 40, they're rezoning it for a 48 unit complex, but developers may be not doing as many units as well. In the state news, uh, Northwest Ener Northwestern Energy is going to be buying a one of the big, huge units of Coal Strip for a dollar. Um, the owner, uh, the owners, Washington-based Puget Sound Energy, the oldest and largest owner of the four-unit power plant, wants out. Uh, the reason: twenty million dollar debt to follow with the purchase of Unit Four alone, one of the larger units. But here is the rub. Half of Montanans get power from Northwestern Energy and by purchasing may raise the rate on electricity bill. But this was where the Public Service Commission com comes in. Um, a lot of times, public, uh, PSC, uh, the Public Service Commission, they prevent any raises in rates unless they see it necessary for expansion or infrastructure improvements. PSC has, still has to approve the transaction in the end, but they plan to use uh, coal power uh, for Washington until uh, Washington's um, anti-coal power ba uh, uh, bill basically comes up in 2025. That money will be used to cover about half the cost of the purchase for Northwest Energy. Northwest Energy covers uh, power in the Northwest region of the United States. And so far, Northwest Energy has promised to cut carbon emissions by 90% by 2045, but the PSC is still figuring out a way not to let Northwestern Energy get out of hand. Of course, in national news, one of the things that are, of course, are happening is the Trump impeachment uh, articles of impeachment. Basically, all you need to know is that the Senate plans to have a trial to further interview witnesses and to find out who the whistleblower is and to make a televised uh, basically available for the public. Uh, so far, the impeachment needs to about two-thirds of the Senate vote, but mainly GOP members have shown no sign of voting for impeachment. Um, Mitch McConnell plans to uh, use uh, this as a way to acquit President Trump, uh, but so far, uh, this trial, uh, they will go on until they decide to have a 51 to 49 vote to cease the trial any further so they can have a final vote in it. Most of the thing they're going to be talking about is the two articles of impeachment, which include the Mueller report uh, and the Ukraine calls. So those are basically all you need to know what's happening right now. There's just a lot going on. And you guys can check that out, npr.org, CNN, uh, MSNBC, Fox News, all that kind of stuff. There's just a lot of information all around the world that you can't miss, but I just want to give you highlights. All right, so let's go over to some, uh, we have an art clip, and this art clip is being featured at the Missoula, uh, Montana Museum of Art and Culture, and it will be, today will be pretty much the last day until they tear it down tomorrow. So you can check it out, and then when I come back, I'm going to have Catherine Hungerford from the Missoula Asian Services to talk about giving trees. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi everyone, we're back here with Catherine Hungerford and she is the development director at the Missoula Asian Services. Uh, they in, they um, promote the independence, dignity, uh, and health of Asian adults and those who care for them. Boy, you know our mission Woo! so well, you bet. Now, maybe not word for word. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. All right, so we're talking about giving trees. We are, yes. This is really nice because this is the kind of tree that you guys can see at many of the locations. I believe you guys do it at uh, Stockman Bank. Um, you know, it's at MSO Hub, the Missoulian. Um, it's on the showroom floor at Missoula Subaru during Share the Love. So um, a lot of different locations around town. Yes, and of course, part of this is like you can see the numbers on here. Which of the, each of the numbers uh, represents? You know, it's for a donation to give a gift to an older adult. So the gift of food through Meals on Wheels program. So some of the tags have different amounts, and that is the amount of a donation that will provide um, you know, hot food or respite and homemaking services. It might be $10 for a grocery gift card, right. um, $10 for a gas card for a Meals on Wheels driver, because of course they're all volunteers. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, of course, Missoula Asian Services does a lot of stuff, and there's always a lot of time to give. You guys have a mm -hmm. March for Meals. That's we do. For the Meals on Wheels program, but this is a, a nice um, giving season as well. Um, it's a nice way to kind of do the umbrella that is kind of like all of Missoula Asian Services and all the services that you guys provide. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So um, this is our um, time of year when we do most of our fundraising and it does sustain our programs and continue services for older adults in the community all year round. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything, are you guys having like a Christmas party? Are you guys going to be a gather in the community, that kind of thing? Um, you know, we just finished our um, Christmas party for the um, RSVP and uh, senior companions, older adults that volunteer through foster grandparents program. So um, that was a lot of fun and a lot of people came out. Um, we had drum brothers and that was completely fun to just oh, hang out and have some fun. Uh, enjoy the holidays and um, just kind of engage with some folks. Nice. Yeah. And speaking of engaging, how can people engage in giving to Giving Trees? Yeah, thank you, Scott. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, you know, the easiest way is to visit any of the locations. Um, a lot of the um, Missoula County locations like the library, the courthouse, um, even Animal Control have some of our Giving Trees up. Uh, Burton's Hair Salon has them as well. So you can come and you just pick a tag off at the tree, um, any of them that appeal to you, eat the candy cane, enjoy that, and then um, follow the directions on the tag, which are just to include the, you know, tuck a check or cash or whatever in the envelope, pop it in the mail, and it will arrive to us, and we'll make sure we get that out to um, older adults in their time of need. Nice. Well, yeah. well what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can... Uh, oh, my goodness. For some, oh, yeah. Thank you. I totally 25. Look Instead of sending you. in the mail and postage, <laughs> I'll do the $25 Thank one. Thank you. Oh, my and goodness. And I will grab this guy. Provides four... Provi sorry. Provides <laughs> four hours of companion... Um, compassionate res uh, respite... Respite. Respite. Mm -hmm. mm. You can say respite. Respite. Uh, respite. Uh, <laughs> care for the caregiver in need of a break. Yeah, and yeah. that is a wonderful program, um, what you are doing, and I thank you so yeah. much, setting such a good example, and um, I can see how you're pouring that out of your heart to help somebody. Um, and there are caregivers that take care of people, you know, 24 seven, they love to do it, they love their family member or friend or whoever it is that they're taking care of. Um, but they really just need that break to be yeah. able to continue to do that and sustain that. And that keeps them out of going to, you know, a facility of any kind. They can continue to live at home, which is where they want to be. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thanks. Just made my day, made my holiday season. <laughs> Thank you. Very generous of you. So if you want to give, uh, go to those locations, MSO Hub. Uh, you can also go to uh, many other locations around town as well. Yeah, Orange Street Food Farm, Missoula Aging Services, which makes some sense. Um, Burton's... Subaru of Missoula during Share the Love, um, lots of programs and places. And of course, you can go to our website at any time, type in Giving Trees, and that will draw up more information. Yep, MissoulaAgingServices.org, all yes. one word. That's right. Yep. And uh, what is your guys' number? Um, we are at 728-7682, 728-7682, and we have trained uh, call center specialists. They can help you in the moment with any questions or of any kind, they're very well trained and they can also give you directions. Awesome. Well, thank you, Catherine. Oh gosh, thank yeah. you. Thank you very All much. Right.
Well, I hope you have a great Christmas. Thank you. Um, and I hope you guys uh, give to the Giving Trees. Thank All you. Right, take care. All the family farms that had once been self-sustaining and had brought and maintained those communities for a century, because originally, like, the oil boom, that's, that's basically the origin story that the white people who live in this small town that I grew up in use as this was when it was good, was when the oil was here, the town was founded, um, and there were train tracks where they aren't, where they aren't anymore, and so that was the best time. And then I came in the 80s, and, and there were maybe four families who still owned land, and they owned a lot of it, and I think it was a lot of corp. I think corporations owned a lot of it, and they were still kind of maintaining it. And, it and so, when you look at indigenous governments and indigenous people, indigenous life ways, you know, and you think about a holistic approach, you know, you're really talking about the interdependent functions, the interdependent relationships within a larger system. And so uh, those systems have sustainability built in. So what we're attempting at Blackfeet is to really look at how you create that, um, uh, or how you uh, borrow from the practice of who you are as Native people and bring it forward and allow it to manifest in a modern context. So when we think about natural resource management, uh, land management, all of those things, right, um, uh, um, uh, Indigenous people's life ways have sustainability already built in. And it's about 15,000 years um, of tried and true methodologies, right? You know, and so we really need to be considering that, you know, and so we want to look at traditional ecological knowledge and how we utilize Western science to substantiate that and not the other way around. I tossed the snow up into the air for the dog to bite because her joy was insatiable and the moonlight made scatter shadows that would kick out and fade. The neighbor was trying to go somewhere. The car tires spun peacock plumes of snow before catching tread and the engines revving cracks of silence. But the swallow was swallowed into echo as the car's back end swung out in thick slaloms onto the road. I stood still in the cold to feel the heat in my coat, to feel the snow's small dapples on my hot neck, to feel my breath heavy and alive with work, and to pray again my prayer to the past. Please, I ask the sky in the thin, cold air, please let his death have been like this, like thick snow falling, the kind that whispers, shh, quiet now, the kind that catches your breath, that startles you up out of yourself with its beauty. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about a couple movies that are coming out this week, and it's time for Pre-Critic, where I judge movies based on absolutely nothing but their title and, of course, preconcept of notions. All right, um, words are hard, and uh, so is this movie, as we welcome back to the video game type movie that isn't really based on a video game, but a book that became a movie, that became a board game, and then there's product, product, product. It actually was a cartoon, too. Actually, it was an okay cartoon, but it looks really weird because they have, like, long faces. Anyways, uh, you get a sequel to a sequel reboot type thing. Uh, you have the same characters from the first one, but they're different because they're basically avatars, blah, 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 all that stuff. And imagine an improv group and just kind of go with that with the world of Jumanji. Uh, watch The Rock and others try their best Danny DeVito and Glover impression in this movie about video games. Um, I'm pretty sure this will run around and fight similar battles and have similar tropes. Um, but of course, it's kind of like uh, new characters uh, kind of like experiencing kind of like the same thing. But it's kind of different just so it keeps people interested. But I'm pretty sure you expect the same thing where they have to survive and beat the game with everybody intact or they die in real life. That's, you know, that's a deterrent. All right, moving on. We got a horror movie during Christmas time. Hey, there's always a horror movie during Christmas time. They always have to do it. It's like, hey, wouldn't it be uh, crazy if they made a movie that was the complete opposite of Christmas cheer? You got yourself Black Christmas. Uh, it's a reboot of a reboot of another thing. But of course, uh, if you've seen the trailer, you can expect this movie to be exactly verbatim for the trailer. I saw the trailer and it's like, okay, so a girl gets killed, 
And what happens next is the girl is just like, I like, I don't know if I can trust it. And then she almost gets killed by somebody, and there's like a supernatural force. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Isn't that a marble, sta- a marble, a marble statue? And then later on, it's like, oh, it was the fraternity the whole time. No, seriously, this is what the trailer literally shows you. It's the fraternity. And then the girls band together and fight the fraternity. Yeah. And then I'm assuming they're going to win, and some of them die, and some things happen. There's a huge fire, and the whole thing kind of tumbles down, and just like they look up on the fire, and then they maybe, maybe, they make a joke at the end. It's like, ha, now everything's cool. There you go. There's your movie. Uh, moving on, uh, we got Richard Jewell um, from Clint Eastwood comes an unsung hero who became a scapegoat for the U.S. government and the Summer Olympics of 1996 Atlanta, Georgia. They spent a lot of money and they didn't want to stop the game, so they just threw him under the bus just so they can continue the games. It was a makeshift uh, bomb that was made uh, by somebody later on. If you if you look up uh, it on online, it's like the the real story is crazier than probably the way this movie's getting portrayed as well. So, spoiler: the guy who played Richard Jewell died of complications from diabetes. Um, Clint Eastwood has been making a lot of movies lately about people who are unsung heroes who actually get into trouble because some people go with the idea that they could have caused the problem that they solved. All right, that's pretty much what you can expect from your movies this weekend. Um, I have, uh, let's see, I have dubbing stuff for you guys, and it is a Christmas movie, so enjoy a little bit of a, a Christmas party from 1931. (laughs) <laughs> ho, ho, who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 I sure won't go. Here, take this and take all this stuff. Get out of here, kid. Hey, Santa, can I have an Xbox? Oh, uh, no, but you can have an, a hat box. Oh, <laughs> you want an Xbox? <laughs> hey, everyone pay attention to me. It's my birthday and Christmas. <laughs> Did you know that my birthday and Christmas are on the same day? Yay! Blurp, blurp. Is he okay? Blurp, blurp. All right, only 549 to go. <laughs> Here you go, sir. Plenty of mashed potatoes to mash. It was a graveyard mash. Blurred, 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 blurred. All right, you need to cut that out. So what did you ask for? I asked for new daddy. <gasps> Here you go, kids. Some food and plenty of mashed potatoes. How are you doing, little Johnny? I asked Santa for world peace, and I'm like, if I'm so generous, he's going to give me lots of presents. Oh, it depends if you follow through after all, son. In this time of year, at this time of decade, 1930s, we have to worry about the Red Scare. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. Okay, make it quick. Oh, uh, <coughs> well, if you're going to be rude about it, then uh, I'm just going to walk away. See you later, kid. Well, hello there, girls. Who wants some hearty eggnog? This eggnog's off the easy. Go easy with this eggnog. You better watch your figure. What's the matter with you? Check out this. I learned this from my morning hot yoga class. It's like regular yoga, but hot. It helps you burn all sorts of calories. What are you trying to say? Hey, kid. Want some buns? Yeah, sure. Oh! Ow! Oh, come on. It's not that hot. Ooh! My fragile ego. Looks like you're ready for dessert. Uh, I'm not done with that. <laughs> Here, let me take your food too as well. Come on now. I'm not happy. Hey, excuse me. I want to talk to you about something. Yes? Have you heard about this new timeshare option? What? Well, it's like a pay share for a house. Oh no, why would I share a house? Here, have some holiday cheer. And a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. Take that, and that. <laughs> Do you want to hear about timeshare? No, not really. And so, the children of Hollywood would eat a feast of kings. Or queens. The reality of the new year ahead of them as they celebrate before the crippling debt that they put on their parents for the holidays. But it's not their fault that they are spoiled. Anyways, happy Christmas, because not everyone's Christmas is black and white. But this movie is... Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about some city council. It's time for your city council report. During this meeting, um, a pu- during public comment, uh, a citizen in the city of Missoula is concerned about a certain toxic waste coming from North Dakota. So this is Zach Gracie talking a little bit about that right now. Last week, there was a couple news articles that came out uh, regarding um, 
the dumping of out-of-state radioactive material in the Missoula landfill. I'm sure that maybe you've, you've read those. And uh, while the articles did state that Missoula has not yet started accepting any of the fracking waste from North Dakota, it appears that the permits are in place and the glass flame systems that are required for the dumping of the waste is there. And of course that Republic Services is, is willing to take, take the material. So uh, adding to the concern, it looks like the Montana Department of Environmental Quality is proposing that we're increasing the allowable radioactive levels to about 200 uh, pico curies per gram, which uh, it, as far as I understand, is four times the allowable amount of, of waste than any other state. In North Dakota, by contrast, the state producing the radioactive fracking waste uh, that we'd likely be getting, receiving the waste from doesn't allow the disposal of that hazardous waste at all, at any levels. So based on that information, and, uh, and I have a few questions for you guys, primarily, does the city have any recourse or influence in advocating for the people of Missoula and preventing, limiting, or regulating the radioactive materials being dumped in our city? All right, so that a question was soon answered by uh, John Engen in this meeting as well. Um, and this is what he had to say. Um, we have some, we still have some signs around saying no hazardous cargo. Uh, that was back in the, that was before my time on council, but I recall that conversation. Uh, but we'll do some investigating, let you know. Okay. We appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Absolutely. All right. So that uh, that was the response. Uh, just uh, talking a little bit about that as well. Um, the main thing that's going on here as well is that the city is working with uh, the Missoula City of Water, otherwise known as the former uh, Mountain Water Company. Uh, Dennis Bellman, Pu Public Works Interim Director of of uh, Missoula Water Company talks about the project and budgets. Many of the focus was towards the infrastructure improvements based on money available and the long-term plan, which is about as long as it can get, which is 100 years. The whole idea of this is that the 100-year plan is basically to re re replace every single pipe, water pipe, in the city of Missoula. And it usually takes about 100 years, and then they start over again. And that's just kind of how it always has been. Uh, but that's that's just initially the plan. But of course, here talks about uh, Dennis uh, Bowman talks about some of the projects in your area of what they're doing currently. And here's a list. Capital improvement projects that we've been able to do um, is multiple different streets. So we had Stoddard and Defoe last summer, Alder and Cooper. Service line swaps were in the process of finish that up next spring. Grant Street and Harv was this summer. Railroad Street, Tool, McCormick, and Woody Street. That was a pretty big one. That was um, a bunch of the 1904 Calamine. Um, we needed to get rid of it. We knew it was leaking in that. Um, that project there, and I'll get to a couple more sides. That project there along with Spruce Street, um, we seen something change in our production the first week of July during those projects, our pumping. All right, so um, Richard Bowman uh, continues on to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, um, many projects were not in consideration when the, uh, when the old owners were running mountain water. A lot of times it was the whole concept of band-aids and fixing things as they break. But with this, the leakage of the water system was blatantly ignored, which is why uh, the city of Missoula went into eminent domain with the combination of the water company. Uh, now it's a public service. Many years later, a lot of legal stuff. Uh, so far, the city has upgraded up to three miles of water mains out of the 135 miles in the city of Missoula. Industry standards, industry standards says that you must replace all pipes within the t 100 years, which is why they have this 100-year plan. Brian Valoxberg talks about savings and costs uh, by ownership. Utilities like water utility, it's truly the long game, and I really am appreciative of the progress um, uh, under your leadership, um, the, uh, the the almost million gallons of water savings a day is extraordinary, and I will. Um, the last thing I'll mention is worth uh, just reminding everybody that all of this has happened and continues to happen at rates that are, I think, six percent. Is it five or six percent? They were they were six percent, but they're actually the rates from uh, 2010, 2011 right. haven't been increased. Right. All right, and those are your uh, rates of how much you pay for uh, your water. Um, so service lines are the water pipes on your property that they're. All, he uh, Dennis Bellman also talks about uh, um, 
working out a plan to help pay for uh, water lines that need replacing. And, and water and service lines are the ones that are underneath your house. There's the ones that you own upon purchase of your home. And a lot of times uh, people have to pay two, three, four thousand dollars for a lot of these uh, replacements, which need to happen at a certain point because depending upon when your uh, house was built depends upon how old your infrastructure is and you always have to double check of when your water line was, but they have a pay schedule where it actually goes into help paying for your house. So it's not a, a compound, it's not a huge compounding um, interest for a pain for a water li- service line replacement for uh, water main access. So that's what they talked about that. John Angan talks about a grant that is helping people who suffer from chronic homelessness. Uh, one of the big things that are happening within the city of Missoula is that the city of Missoula move forward with uh, helping a lot of people who are uh, chronically homeless, especially with the winter shelter. But this one is a little bit more in terms of helping people um, uh, in the long run. This $150,000 is going to save lives, and it's one of the things that we do as a matter of course, trying to solve problems in the community. And doesn't get a lot of fanfare, it's just one of those things that we do along with lots of other things. Um, that's followed by this, um, this grant from the National Institutes of Health, which we believe um, is likely the first of these that the City of Missoula has received. Um, and this program is all about helping uh, everyone, but particularly uh, low-income kiddos, um, get uh, get exposure to uh, to the sciences and and helping them overcome barriers that we see um, often in our schools and often in low-income schools for folks, especially girls, to have access to science education. This is built to. Um, this is built to uh, uh, entice and excite and um, show kiddos the possibilities so that um, their lives can get better. All right. So that was John Ingen talking about that uh, grant. The city is working with services that work with people with mental illness and addiction to help fill in those gaps that are often overlooked. Um, many of the city tries to work with people who want to get help. But a lot of times, the Pavarel Center only accepts a certain criteria of people. And um, as of more recently, a lot of the uh, citizens of Missoula are want to help those people who are dealing with addiction, um, abuse, and all that stuff. So that's uh, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Um, but that's how I wanted to end the city council meeting. But that's not how I end the city council report because you got a whole bunch of committee meetings. Um, one of the things that they talked about, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about um, before I move on to the next topic is that um, Higgins Street bridge project update. So they're not replacing the bridge. It's an updated bridge where they're, uh, they keep the bones, but they replace the, the basically the surface. They're, they're going to do it how they did in... Um, um, Madison, where they do half of the bridge at one section, and then they work on the other half the next time. And the whole idea is they want to improve the bike path, sidewalk for uh, pedestrians, because if you've ever walked down Higgins Bridge, it's very awkward when you have maybe two people walking side by side, and it's like you have to walk pretty much single file, and then you have to walk really pretty close to those folks. But one of the biggest things that they are trying to work on was access and ADA, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, to provide access with people who have um, disabilities to be able to get to Karis Park without having to go all the way around to a couple of the access points near Tamarack and, of course, further up uh, to the access to the Best Read Park. They want to figure out a way so they can actually get down directly from Higgins to Karis Park since it's one of the most busy, one of the more busier uh, streets and sidewalks in the downtown Missoula area. Um, so anyways, moving on, one of the things they also talking about in terms of downtown is that Northwestern Energy is looking to replace all the uh, light bulbs in the city lighting district uh, with LED light bulbs. And this is a huge process and they're working with the city, the PSC, because it's going to cost money. And they're just trying to figure out a way how it's going to cost money, but they're going at this at a way so they're telling the city of Missoula that we're going to be saving money with LED lights, and this is what they have to say. This is uh, Northwestern Energy Rick Edwards tell, telling us why they are switching to LEDs. First and foremost, energy savings. You know, obviously with the LEDs, there's, there's tremendous energy savings, maintenance opportunities, all of those sorts of things. Secondly, many of the distributors are no longer or are getting away from uh, providing high pressure sodium lights. So that's another reason or impetus for us uh, to move forward. So 
I'm going to spend a little bit of time talk about the project, uh, highlight some of the things that, that Blaine already talked about. Then I'm going to focus on on what what's going on directly in Missoula. All right, so basically what's directly going on in Missoula is that they want to replace, uh, let's see, how many lights are they trying to replace? They want to replace upwards to 1,800 streetlights in the downtown area with about 600 streetlights in the county area. Uh, so far, the numbers in savings from what their presentation said that they want to save up to $79,000 a year, which is 718,000 less kilowatts per hour per year, which is also uh, about 2,000 uh, kilowatts per day, um, or if you want to do it in more average, is about 82 uh, kilowatts of energy per hour less with this um they're basically they each uh each um it's going to be basically saving nine dollars an hour for uh, lighting that's i, I kind of did the math on that um the city would charge upwards of uh change the 1800s um sarah uh, norcart the lawyers from northwest energy talks about the rates and stuff with the public service commission so this is uh you know, when there's ever a big change or anything kind of like uh, adjusting like that, a lot of times the, the rates um, uh, have to change to help reflect how much they're paying for this. Um, and they're going to be doing this as a four-year project to replace these light bulbs with LED light bulbs. Um, this is a replacement project. This isn't as the, like they're replacing it with LED lights as the light bulbs break. This is more just like they're actually moving forward with replacing them. So this is Sarah Norcart on this. Let's say, you know, 50% complete we'd have about 12 million that would go into rates that customers would be paying. All customers would be, all street lighting customers would be paying. But at the same time, they're also not paying as we move forward with the rest of the project, they wouldn't be paying for that other 12 million until we went back with, before the Public Service Commission. Brian? All right, so, uh, the, uh yeah, that's basically what, the, what they're going to be doing, paying. Um, but, of course, the Public Service Commission is the one that regulates how much ratepayers pay. Um, like this kind of projects, they have to get approval from the PSC. And it's like, hey, we want to replace all these light bulbs with the LEDs. It's like, okay, how much is this going to cost? It's like, how much is it going to cost the ratepayers? And then they determine whether or not it's uh, too much, too little. And there's a lot of lighting districts in the city of Missoula. So some of the lighting districts might not actually affect you directly. And some um, lighting districts might affect you, especially if you are working in the downtown area, businesses downtown, uh, property owners, that kind of stuff. Um, even like your neighborhoods, if you have a street light up there, that could cost as well, some of your neighbors as well. And it really just depends upon how much of the infrastructure. And if you live in a SLID, which is a special lighting, um, uh, um, what's that called? Uh, SID is a special improvement district, so it's a special lighting improvement district. Sorry, I got to remember my acronyms. Uh, the rate increase for people inside the streetlights as they move forward, you could always double check your power bill to see if it falls under those lines of residential mixed commercial areas, which could see your power bill, bill go up as a result. But again, PSC has to give that approval to move forward on this. Uh, Sarah Norcart uh, responds to concerns customers may have moving forward on this. So she's reflecting on this. But there are laws that control what we can charge customers and it has to be ju just and reasonable in order for the commission to allow us to charge those rates. And there's another law that says we have to pursue the least cost resource. So we have a lot of um, overview of what we do and we're always looking out for the best interest of customers and wanting to work with customers to ensure that they get the services they want but also then we're complying with the law so that we can recover our costs from the, the Public Service Commission. So we'll want to continue to work in that regard um, with the communities that we serve. All right, so that um, was Northwest Energy on that. Um, so far the city moves forward with Northwest Energy and continues through this process. This is not approved, but th they're looking at this. Um, a lot of times they also mentioned during this meeting is that if you actually wanted to vote and get out of uh, the special lighting districts, you can actually require two thirds of your neighborhood or, or the people who are in the SLIDs to actually vote um, ag against this petition and be basically pu be pulled out of the special lighting improvement district. Yep, and that's that's kind of how I'm gonna leave it on as well. So okay, moving on. This is the big thing. This is the big thing that's happening in the city of Missoula. This is all well, the the next hot topic because you know like this is kind of going on the, around the vein of just like a bigger uh, structures um, development being built on in and around uh, in neighborhoods. Um, so forth. Um, 
4th Street, um, just right next to uh, Bridge Pizza. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying that. I'm hungry. Uh, developers are looking to rezoning and vacating the right of way for a f potential 48 unit complex that is being proposed. Um, the, the developers have also mentioned that they haven't actually have a, a, a official plan what they're going to build, but this would actually allow for upwards up to 48 unit condo apartment mix. 75% would be condos, 25% would be a rental apartments. Um, so Nick Kaufman uh, with WM, WGM Group talks about the vision for this property. So the vision for the property was to provide housing downtown for a diverse population. People that want amenities of downtown without having to drive downtown, continuity between the residents in this location and the activities in downtown, walking access to neighborhoods. This is a hub of several different neighborhoods in Missoula. Uh, being able to get to U of M, trails, downtown, and even get on the Milwaukee Trail, which take you all the way up to Southgate Mall and now all the way to Hamilton if you really want to go that far. 75% uh, condominiums, 25% apartments, about 48 units with a parking garage. And we hope this project actually improves neighborhood connectivity. So there's a bunch of community policy out there. Uh, our Missoula City Growth Policy adopted in 2016. Uh, All right, so, um, you know, a place called home, our Missoula, that kind of stuff. That was one of the biggest pushes to help um, uh, assess the community need. But here's the one thing that a lot of people are kind of forgetting is that the University Neighborhood District proposed an overlay of a design standards for their uh, university neighborhoods. And the 4th Street area also falls along those lines. And part of this uh, vision for moving forward is that they're going to basically take out that overlay for uh, being able to build this kind of thing. And a lot of community members are a bit concerned that the city is kind of changing what they put into place. So they're saying that, yeah. So this is Sam Duncan, and she wants to make sure that these units are affordable 10 years from now, uh, just because it's built for affordability doesn't mean it's going to be affordable later down the road. And this is what she had to say. If we're going to have 48 units and 10% of home ownership opportunities are going to be permanent affordable or permanently affordable, this is four units out of a 48 unit development. And that to me seems insufficient. Um, moving on to number six, um, which is speaking to I think avoiding an Airbnb fiasco. Um, this, as it is written, still allows for people to have month-to-month -month renters and then kick them out to have daily, you know, daily rate Airbnbs for two months and then re-rent it. As someone who looks for affordable housing on Craigslist all the time, I can tell you this is really common, um, and so it seems insufficient again to allow this for two months. You're going to be then enabling homeowners or renters to continue to have this uh, not sustainable housing for people who are renting um, in these spaces and are going to be kicked out. Additionally, I'm under the impression that the city does not currently have um, capacity to over oversee and enforce uh, this kind of um, restriction. So that if you do have this only two months, can you do um, rentals under 30 days? at a time, who's going to keep track of that? All right, so that is uh, one of the public comments. Another pub public comment was, uh, um, let's see, was Michael Albritton. He talks about the university overlay, um, which I just talked about, was put in place to prevent larger structures in neighborhoods, and this is what he had to say about that. proposal does not fit into the character of the neighborhood. Let the development of these parcels take place under the existing zoning under the existing neighborhood overlay that the neighborhood developed, and without the right-of-way vacation, this will still create a project that will have denser housing that will fit into the neighborhood of the character. In an October 8th letter from MGM to Development Services, MGM states, this project will not be possible without the support of the community. Well, I have seen zero community support for this. If you look at the minutes from the planning board meeting, both written and oral, Public comments were all opposed. If you look at today's public comments written in the agenda, they were also opposed. So I agree, the project should not go forward without the support of the community. All right, so that's what Michael, 
Michael Albritton had to say about that. Um, many neighbors in the uh, 4th Street area think that they can build something really neat without having to uh, have a high-rise apartment condo complex. The public comment portion consisted of people calling out the city for not following university overlay system, which in place was put into place by the current uh, city council members as well. Um, and they want to figure out a way to match the aesthetic of the neighborhood without having that uh, giant complex right there. This sounds familiar because it's been done many, many different times within the city of Missoula as well. Uh, there's uh, so many neighborhoods and so many uh, areas have uh, dealt with a similar uh, situation when it comes to having uh, large density uh, apartments and low affordability. But then like, at the same time, um, 4th Street, right next to downtown, apartments, condos, right there, that is prime real estate, plain and simple. And developers uh, want to develop, but what happens after development is something that many of the citizens here in Missoula are really concerned about. So this is going to be moving forward to the uh, public uh, hearing portion of the December 16th meeting. Um, many comments uh, against this claim that the city is hypocritical for allowing this rezoning and giving up the right of way. Uh, anyways, you can always email or call your uh, local government. You can go onto the website at ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, it is a local resource where you can find everything that you need to know about the government, who represents your ward, what ward you're in, and uh, it's just a good way, a good tool for you to use to get involved with your city of Missoula, voice your concern, all that stuff. But then again, uh, if you want to just go there yourself and uh, uh, during public comment, you have to wait sometime in the middle of the meeting when they have the public hearing for uh, items related to this topic during the public hearing, which uh, the city council meeting starts at 7 p.m. It's off of Pine Street right next to the Thomas Mar Bar. Um, <laughs> And it's uh, basically by the, uh, the the transit center by the Missoula County Courthouse. You can't miss it. Um, it's uh, city council chambers, and you can check it out. Meeting starts at uh, um, 7 p.m. And it's the last meeting of the year. They're uh, they're gonna be uh, this uh, the 16th, and then of course the week after it's the two days before Christmas, and then the week after that's two days before New Year's, and it's also the fifth Monday of the month. Uh, so a lot of times what the city is going to be doing is going to be taking off the next two Mondays. Um, next Monday is the last meeting of the year, and then seeing starting in January, there's going to be some new city council members uh, happening at the city of Missoula as well. Of course, I did want to talk a little bit about ad admin finance. They talked about uh, all the days off in 2020. Uh, typically, federal holidays, fifth Mondays of the month are usually taken off, and this year they wanted to have a, a bonus Monday off or bonus week off for the spring break, which is March 16th through the 20th. Of course, this uh, the schedule is shall be released of 2020. They'll probably have a little talk a little bit more about this during the consent agenda on Monday. That pretty much does it for your meetings this week. A big chunk of city council committee meetings talked a lot about this 40 unit condo apartment complex off of 4th Street. Next week, the like I said, last uh, we, uh, meeting of the city week, I'm kind of going off the notes as well. So without further ado, uh, for more information, go to ci.missoula.mt.us for all your source of Missoula government. All right, cool. Let's talk uh, a little bit about um, events, but before I go into events, I have another art clip for you guys, and this is an, a public art installation right next to uh, Mountain Line. So if you go to the Mountain Line Transit Center in the downtown Missoula area and you check this out, you get a nice, uh, you get to see some nice public art. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Um, those art clips are provided by our very own Rick Phillips. Uh, he does a lot of the city council meetings. He's the man b b uh, behind the door. So uh, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about events that are happening this weekend as well. As always, the Missoula Public Library hosts Tiny Tales and Story Time, which is a great way for your kids who are five and under, who are just learning to read to get them um, engaged with reading. Um, of course, you know, if you if you know it's winter outside, all those indoor sports arenas, you know, you got Mismo, you got Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, you got Rootsacker Sports Center, you got Flying Squirrel, many different fun options to keep your kids active this winter time. Uh, Hands-on science, uh, get your brain active with the Spectrum Discovery Center. Uh, University of Montana Spectrum Discovery is a great place where all visitors of all ages are explored through science. They have engaging exhibits. They have a brand new exhibits where they really expand about uh, um, watersheds and just really in, in depth with uh, like how uh, the circulation of water. It's really cool. Um, it's 812 Tool Avenue. It's three dollar three fifty for anyone four and over. And if you're under three, you get in free. Learn about all them systems that make up the Discovery Bench today, and their maker space is Spirographs. Liberace live. Uh, I don't know why I yelled. Sorry. It's the morning. It's too early. Uh, Asaf Adonai is portraying Liberace in the city of Missoula. If you've seen him around town, he's the piano man. Uh, plays a song. He's the piano man. And he will during uh, the Southgate Mall this uh, holiday season. Um, he's basically doing um, performances from noon to 4 p.m. every single weekday. Um, you can check him out custom design tux by Rococo Bridal. Uh, they basically designed these tux for him for free um, using some of the material that they have that they've collected um, and also yeah, it's a wonderful you know, if you ever if you got a chance to look at any of them, I'm sure, uh, you know you should definitely check it out because he shared it on his YouTube, Facebook and all that stuff. Um, Asaf Adonai, Liberace. Can't, you can't miss it. Festival of Trees. Stopping bank building going on until Sunday. Uh, Stopping Bank, uh, they'll have the Festival of Trees, and they will be part of designing and decorating the holiday tree at Stockman Bank. Well, yarns and water, watercolor back to the Missoula Public Library. It's a great way for you guys to uh, stitch and crochet, or you just want to do some watercoloring. And it's from 12 to 1 p.m. Family fun time at the YMCA. It's some indoor fun with you and the family. $17 per family. Um, per, uh, of, uh, and of course, if you're a member at the YMCA, it is it's free because you already pay your dues. Uh, current dive-in movie. So, and so, you know how like the, you know it's a pun on drive-in movies, but it's a dive-in movie because in Current Aquatic Center, you're inside, you're in a pool. And you're going to be watching Toy Story 4 starting at 5 p.m. Uh, actually, doors open at 5 p.m. Um, or you can go at 7.30 p.m. to catch up with Woody, Buzz Lightyear, and the rest of the gang. It's $4 per person. The dive-in movie features food and drinks available for purchase and have fun crafting stations. Uh, purchase advanced tickets at Currents Aquatic Center. Qu uh, quantities are uh, limited. The next dive-in movie is February 21st, 2020. So it's a very special thing. It doesn't happen too often. And one thing that doesn't happen too often, but it does. this is the 30th time it's happened in over 30 years, so it's an annual thing. Uh, Super Christmas, Southgate Mall. It's going to be, oh, I thought they usually do it at the, uh, um, the clock tower, but apparently it's going to be at Lucky's Court. Um, it's a holiday unique tuba band. The 30th year, they're bringing uh, holiday classics and sing-alongs and having all sorts of fun. Of course, there's the gay holiday soiree at the Zootan Arts Community Center. The Zach is partnering with the Improvident Sovereign Court of the State of Montana uh, and the center, uh, Missoula's LBGTQ Community Center, uh, to host the annual gay holiday so soiree at in the new Zach showroom. The party starts off with a beer and wine cocktail hour from 7 to 8 p.m. Drag performances will be hitting the stage at 8 p.m. with curated music and dancing to follow. Saturday, you got the Missoula Bird Count to be determined. If you're interested in being a part of that, just wanted to uh, flash up this uh, email right here. If you want to be involved with that, you can uh, contact Larry Weeks. Um, hey, if you're a bird watcher, um, this is a, the best place for you guys to go check out. It's BWG, BWS Jeans at gmail.com. Yep. All right, let's... Uh, Minimize that. All right, cool. Um, you got crafty fairs. You, know, you got all sorts of crafts and stuff. Clinton um, is going to be doing a crafts fair from 9 to 2 p.m. You got Lowell School is doing a hip-hop 
uh, to raise money for their school. And it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Grey Wolf Casino is doing also a craft fair from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And those are some of your craft fair happening this weekend. It's never too late. It's a great way to have some crafty fun and also come up with some, some nice gift ba baskets for those that you work with this winter. Um, Charlie Brown Christmas live on stage. MCT Center, Center for Performing Arts starting at 10 a.m. Uh, Saturday, December 14th, Saturday, December 21st at 10 a.m., and Monday, December 23rd at 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. at MCT Center for Performing Arts. While this is going on, they also have the Seussical uh, happening at the uh, MCT for Performing Arts, which also happens at 2 in the afternoon and 7.30 p.m. most nights from Thursday through Saturday. Sunday, they have an earlier night show at 6, 6.30, so you might want to double-check at mctinc.org for more information. MCAT Saturday drop-ins every single Saturday. MCAT hosts a Saturday drop-ins for kids who just like to make movies, make some stop animation, play with Legos. You know, it's just some fun um, interactive uh, environment for kids just to kind of come down here, create. There's a lot of kids here that come here every single week that know what they want, are really good about working with other kids, and is a great um, opportunity for a lot of kids as well. $10 per kid, $15 for siblings. So if you have three siblings, it's $15. If you have two siblings, $15. Just kind of how it works out. All right. Enchanted Christmas Village, Nine Mile School is uh, hosting a village with elf houses, craft vendors, soup and hot chocolate stations, trees and wreaths for sale, and so much more. The village is open from 1 to 5 p.m. and it's going to be at Nine Mile Schoolhouse. Speaking of trees, um, from 10 to 5 p.m. Missoula Fairgrounds trees are for sale. The uh, Lions Club of Missoula is uh, hosting. This usually happens um, every single day. I think it's like noon to about 6. And it's a place where you just buy trees. That's it. And the, uh, all the money goes to the Lions Club, which is an organization that goes to helping um, many um, donations throughout town. It's a charity organization with a bunch of people who work together. All right, so self-service gift wrap station at Missoula Public Library. If you go to the Missoula Public Library, trying to keep your... Uh, your holiday gift a secret. Wrap your gifts at Missoula Public Library and keep them away from those prying eyes that provide wrapping paper, tapes, bows, and gift tag. Uh, you bring the gifts and your best wrapping skills will keep the atmosphere festive with hot cocoa and holiday tunes wrapping from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Hey, it wouldn't be a holiday season without an ugly sweater deal and uh, glacier ice rink starting at 5.30 p.m. to about 8 p.m. Bring your ugliest sweater all skaters who wear holiday sweaters will receive a free hot chocolate uh, hot chocolate coupon, and the wearers of the ugly sweater will win free skating passes or other prizes. Public skating admission is six dollars for adults, four dollars for youth and uh, seniors, and skate rentals are three dollars. On top of that, if you don't have your own skates. All right, so that pretty much does it for what I needed to talk about uh, this weekend as well. Um, I'm just going to kind of like maybe glimpse over MissoulaEvents.net where you guys can find more information about this as well. I'm just looking through Saturday, seeing if there's anything happening here. Susan Cole, Ugly Sweater, Josh, uh, John Floridis is going to be benefiting for Soft Landing Missoula. Um, Susan Cole again. Uh, oh, there's going to be a drag show at the Badlander uh, Saturday night as well. Uh, doors open at 7.30. Uh, they have the 8th Annual Holiday Swing Downtown Dance Collective. Uh, neon Lights, Flying Squirrel, um, absolutely uh, DJ music at the Badlander. Uh, you got karaoke at Lolo Hot Springs. You got Band in Motion at the Union Club Saturday night as well. Uh, just a lot of different things happening um, this weekend as well. And, you know, if you are looking for more information as well, you can go, go to MissoulaEvents.net. It is a wonderful source for everything Missoula. All right. So that pretty much does it for me today. And if you're interested in finding out more about me, you can look up Wake Up Missoula on the Google. You can find me on Facebook, find me on Twitter. Um, you can find me on um, all sorts of things like YouTube. All right, so without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and stay warm. Mm -hmm.